For this video, we're going to be talking about Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease is a disease that affects uh, initially muscles and muscle movement, and then eventually in its later stages starts affecting the mind, leading to mood swings and dementia. So what causes Parkinson's disease? It is, uh, it's an effect to the brain that causes decreased dopamine and increased acetylcholine. And what dopamine and acetylcholine are, all you need to know at this point is that they are in the brain and they affect the way that the brain communicates uh, from one side to another. So, what are some risk factors for developing Parkinson's disease? Typically affects men and they're men that are in the ages between 40 and 70. Also, there's a genetic predisposition for developing Parkinson's disease. So, what are the signs and symptoms of Parkinson's disease? I told you it's initially uh, problems with the muscles. So, uh, the four main points that you want to see here, tremors, and so it can be tremors in the hands or all the extremities leading to, uh, like, pill rolling is uh, the term that they like to use. Uh, rigidity, they're going to be very stiff, and their muscles stay very stiff, so uh, this also causes slow movement, which is bradykinesia. Brady being slow, such as bradycardia, slow heart rate, bradykinesia is slow muscle movements and postural instability. Think about it, if their muscles are very rigid and moving very slow, it's going to be hard to make those slight position changes that you need when you're trying to stand or sit up, and so it makes posturing yourself very difficult. So, uh, I see this a lot on the tests, or at least when I was in nursing school. Shuffling is that the way that they walk. And it's not just shuffling, but they're going to be shuffling they're going to have an arched, uh, an arched, they're going to be stooped, an arched back, and they're going to have their walker, and when they, they're going to usually move very slow, but when they go to walk, they take off like a rocket, and they go way too fast, and that's where you see the postural instability. So these patients, in their severe cases, are at a very high risk for falls. So I told you this affects muscles, and so not just skeletal muscles of the, the large extremities, but also of the face, so you'll see a mask-like expression. One way you can remember that this is, uh, it, it decreases the muscles, okay? And the way you can remember that is it's Parkinson's. So think of if you're going to park, you're slowing down, and, and it gets to the point where they just stop working. So their muscles are parking in Parkinson's. So I told you, you got the shuffling um, with a stooped, uh, usually typically using a walker, or hopefully that could help them to get around. I told you tremors with pill rolling, uh, slow movements. Also, they can't control, they have mask-like face, and so they might have drooling, so it's, uh, they can't hold their, their face shut as normal, so you'll see drooling. And also, they can have dysphagia, and this is because it's decreasing their muscles, and the muscles in the throat are, are quite small, so as those get weak, they may have trouble swallowing effectively. In the severe cases of Parkinson's, you start seeing the cognitive deficits. And so you will see mood swings, where one second they're fine, and the next they're having a temper tantrum. Uh, leading up to dementia, and so dementia differs from delirium. Delirium is acute, uh, meaning it's sudden and it's reversible. Dementia is a long-term chronic uh, altered mental status. And so Parkinson's, we're talking about a chronic disease. This is going to be something we'll live with for the rest of their lives. And they can take some medicines to slow it down or for side effect or to get rid of maybe some of the symptoms, but it's going to be a chronic disease. Now, what is diagnosis? There's no uh, one particular lab that they can get to say that it's Parkinson's, what they have to do is look at the signs and symptoms and then rule out any uh, other possibilities for the muscle weakness, for the mood swings, for the uh, dementia that may be causing that, the, those problems. And also they'll look at the risk factors. If it's a man that's in between 40s and 70s, he has a family history of Parkinson's and he's got these symptoms, that's how they're going to diagnose it. So treatment. I told you it's a chronic disease, like getting to the point where they're going to be in a skilled nursing facility, so they're going to need assistance with ADLs. This is showering, making sure they get their nutrition, uh, helping them with bills uh, in the case of social work, um, preventing uh, skin integrity issues, uh, preventing falls. Uh, as far as medications, I told you they have low dopamine, so you got medicines that increase dopamine, dopaminergics, the end of dopa. So think dopamine, dopa. You got levodopa, carbidopa. And then you have dopamine agonists, such as ropinerol, which is known as Requip. So, you know, there's going to be some, some medicines for Parkinson's, and then you have the anticholinergics. So there's 
Parkinson's meds is typically how people uh, refer to these. As far as uh, surgery is concerned, there is deep brain stimulators, and what you'll see is they'll go in and put a stimulator in the brain, so it'll affect the part of the brain that's being affected by the Parkinson's. And sometimes, uh, you look it up on YouTube, there's videos of a guy with it turned on, and he's perfectly fine, and he'll turn it off temporarily, and all the shaking comes right back almost immediately. Uh, and almost to the point that he dropped his remote at one point and someone had to come and help him turn his deep brain stimulator back on or he could have been stuck in that. Also, sometimes they can do brain surgeries in severe cases in which they'll go in and the part of the brain that is messed up, they can like destroy it and get rid of it. And uh, But this is Parkinson's and uh, Parkinson's disease.